Assalamu alaikum guys, uh, it's your boy Real TV, aka Dream TV, and we're back with another serious video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what's been going on in Palestine for the past few weeks. Uh, in recent events, I've been trying to educate myself on what's been going on between Palestine and Israel, and every single day I read news articles, watch videos about innocent kids dying in Gaza, and things of that nature, and the media suppressing different news articles and making Palestinians seem to be the bad guys when Israel has millions of dollars in guns and weapons. Uh, so today I'm making a video to share with you guys what's been going on in Palestine. Um, I didn't want to give you guys misinformation since I'm still learning myself about what's going on and what the, what's driven the conflict and things like that. So I had some help from a friend. Um, his name is Mustafa. You're going to see him in the video talking. Uh, Mustafa is Palestinian and he's from America. He reached out to some family members in Gaza and uh, we got a, um, a Palestinian woman who's currently living in Gaza also going to be speaking in this video. So together the two of them are going to be educating you and me on what's going on in Palestine and uh, what we can do to help. Um, for now all we can do is make dua and educate ourselves on what's been going on. Um, so please don't forget to like this video, comment and share this video with as much people as you can. So the more likes and comments I get on this video is the more YouTube pushes it out and so more people watch this video and more people educate themselves. Let's get into the video. Hello everyone, um, I live in Palestine. Assalamu alaikum, hi guys, my name is Mustafa. I'm Palestinian, born and raised in the US. And to be living here, it means like you don't have dreams. want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the current events what's going on in Palestine, Palestine, in Jerusalem, Sheikh Jarrah, in Gaza. First things first, I need to prioritize this all by saying, unfortunately, everything that has been going on, it's been going on for decades, it's been going on for years. But unfortunately, what's been hap what's happening currently, what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis has happened already and continues and has continued to happen for years upon years on end in the entirety of Palestine and specifically the bombardment um, and the onslaught is specifically towards the Gaza Strip um, because it is the only city with a total full Palestinian population where there is not Israeli physically in it. However, that does not really make much difference because it's controlled by the Israelis by land, sea, and air. The people that don't know the Gaza Strip, which has been, like I said, on in a siege since 2007, People there suffer from all their base, like they are prevented from all the basic needs. They don't have electricity, water, or even the basic things. They don't have freedom of movement, freedom of speech, anything. All the human rights are deprived from them. So, what has happened initially, you know, in this round of major escalations from the Israeli side towards the Palestinians? is that there was a city in Jerusalem, which is Palestinian. There's also more than 3,000 Palestinians right now in Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood that are being threatened to being expelled from their houses, their grandparents' houses, just because what settlers and white settlers want their homes. This is a violation to all human rights and human laws. Imagine that you have to share your house with someone that you don't know just because like the government's telling you Unforcibly telling you that you have to live with them. This is their houses and they've been there since 1956 They were expelled once in the Nakba and then they took a Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in Jerusalem as their new home And now they're facing a new Nakba. They're being threatened to be expelled again They're just gonna go up to their homes and either destroy it and escort them out, no questions asked. Literally as simple as that, as ridiculous as that sounds, that is quite simply what's happening. And obviously, in turn, like any other human being in the face of the planet, the Palestinians weren't okay with that, and they weren't going to tolerate that, and they stood up against that, you know, and this led to protests, and then protests on, by the Palestinians, and the protests obviously were met by Israeli aggression and violence towards the protest, throwing the Israelis attacking them with stun grenades and rubber bullets, huge rubber bullets, which has taken out some of the Palestinian protesters' eyes out and such. And we saw this spill over to 
Al-Quds, Al-Aqsa, sorry, excuse me, Al-Aqsa, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, where Palestinians were celebrating Ramadan, praying, you know, doing whatever you do in your holy site, reading the holy texts, you know, sitting, congregating with their fellow, you know, friends and family. They even burned a part of Al-Aqsa Mosque, and which is one the third holiest places for Muslims. Not just that, uh, before in a week it was Christians' um, holidays, and unfortunately they also started beating up Christians who were going to the Church of Sculpture in Jerusalem too. So when people say that this is um, a, religi a religious conflict, this is not a religious conflict. And it's not even a conflict. What we're talking about, this is a genocide and ethnic cleansing to the people of Palestine that are indigenous to you this know, land. You address a people with absolutely minimal, minimal, it's not even fair to call it resistance because it's minimal. It is homemade resistance, absolutely homemade resistance. They do not have an army. Your army has tanks. The Palestinians do not have one tank. Your army has planes. The Palestinians do not have one plane. Your army, you know, it has you know the the top of the line technology the palestinians do not have anything near that the palestinians are only resisting in the form that they are able which is pure you know home 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 level resistance this is why when the palestinians in gaza they are firing the rockets that you you talk about a lot the rockets why when they're fired instead of reporting the israeli casualties you report how many rockets were fired who, who, what journalist, where do you read this where they report how much ammunition was used in an attack? But unfortunately, the media is so manipulative that they want to report it like that so it can seem like it was a big deal. I think that they feel they feel powerless. Their, their best weapon right now, as you pointed out, is incredibly ineffective. So ineffective that when we talk about them launching these rockets, we say how many they sent. Not how many people they killed or how many buildings they destroyed, but how many weapons they fired. We don't do that. For, it's to make people think that they're firing like cruise missiles or something like that. No, they're incredibly ineffective rockets. And now with, with Iron Dome going up, uh, from what I've read, four of the physical elements of Iron Dome are already deployed. By this weekend, they're expecting a fifth. Soon, even their most effective, terribly weak weapon will be useless as well, or even more useless than it is. They cannot leave, they cannot go and leave as they please, whether it be to study, whether it be for medical reasons, whether it be for a vacation to visit, to go out, no, nothing there. You have besieged these people and you don't want any, you want, it doesn't, what's, what's the, what are they supposed to do? You know, I don't want to talk bullshit and be politically correct. I'm talking realistically, I'm talking on a humanitarian scale, on a human, on a rational rational and practical scale so getting back on kind of just recapping the current events after you know all the attacks in the worshippers and al-aqsa mosque and towards the al-aqsa you know damaging one of islam's holy sites and you know all of this you know spilled over to gaza and to a lot of cities around palestine which you know continue to see protests which were met again with the israeli aggression we're not talking about one bomb or two bombs we're talking about heavily bombing that almost is it's 24 hours, it doesn't stop. You know, full onslaught, you know, and Gaza, it's a small city, you know, it does not, uh, it does not, whatever attack is happening towards it, it's affecting everybody simultaneously, you know, and it's not, the thing is, it's not just physical warfare, you know, it's, you have, you have, you have put them in an open air prison. They are not able to do anything. But I mean, it's crazy because you know, you hear the casualties of Israel, you know, killing. And what the Western media and the terrorist state claim is that they are attacking military bases, but that's not true. When you come and see all the reports, you'll find that more than half of the victims that like right now, as I'm speaking, are more than 200 martyrs, 200 people died. Half of them are women and kids and a lot of them are under the rubbles because like as we know they are like bombing streets so emergency and paramedics can enter and go save them so they stay under the rubbles for hours crying for help while the world is turning a blind eye as much as the media wants to portray it like it's a two-side conflict and that the palestinians they're fighting back the palestinians are shooting rockets you know all this bullshit you need to realize it's just not how it's working Palestinians, they are resisting and they have the right to resist through, look at the international law. 
they have the right to resist because they are they are occupied so actually quite frankly the palestinians they have every right to do whatever they are doing the palest the palestinians they are the only one under the military occupation the palestinians they are the one who have had their land stolen from them with the illegal uh, israeli settlements which continue to expand they are literally trying currently to expand them in 2020 and this is how the all of palestine was taken you know city by city you know neighborhood by neighborhood and they want to continue you know you know the palestinians are the only people who are having to deal with the apartheid laws you know discrimination you know violence you know what's what's left to be said uh, honestly at this point so how are we going to portray it as a two-side conflict under these circumstances it's not rational to it's not accurate to and it's not fair to definitely you know look at the civil rights movements with martin luther king you know just a few years back you know this was it was a big deal it was a problem for the mainstream the mainstream america it was like what the hell you know like this is so unacceptable look at it now look at it now it's a disgrace it's a shame that it even had to happen it's a shame that this was a conflict or you know a struggle that had to be ta taken but the problem is you need to realize not everything mainstream is right and history has continued to repeat this over and over again you need to be able to form your own opinions you need to be able to educate yourself simply try flipping the script for a second and let's put the scenario that palestinians or arabs or muslims whichever term you want to use were you know attacking jewish worshippers at their western wall or at you know a temple or you know at a synagogue during the holiest of their days and their religion would we not see world level condemnation would we, it would it not be an atrocity of course it would okay so what's the difference explain to me rationally and logically and factually the difference there is absolutely no difference aside from blatant racism and normalization about these kind of atrocities towards arabs muslims specifically the palestinians you know not to mention israel's you know very modern infrastructure and technology you know as much as the rockets are indiscriminatory and essentially very very non-effective um and homemade and you know inefficient they're not real weapons the israelis they have the iron defense system the the, the iron dome defense system and they have bunkers underneath the ground where they can take shelter you know you you cannot do it to the other side and not expect the retaliation quite literally and the difference the big difference is the other side they do not have the infrastructure you have they do not have bunkers they do not have an iron defense system where they're hit, getting hit they're killed that's it there is nothing to be done they literally cannot go anywhere Gaza is very tiny they can there is no safe spot when you're bombing over 100 different times around the city it's a city it's a small city it's a small enclave of land where are they supposed to go what are they supposed to do it's overpopulated at that to put it just an additional perspective for you more palestinians in gaza have been killed by the israeli attacks in the past day than israelis have been killed by gazan rockets and weapons and attacks whatever you want to call them in the past 20 years so let that sink in let it put it into perspective it cannot be talked about at the same level you know it cannot be talked about in the same lens as if these are two going at it as if they are equal parties one is an oppressor and one is a resistance and a people who only who have the means of resistance to defend themselves and to, to defend their land and to fight back for all the rights that's been taken from them it is important to educate yourself it is important to make dua for your brothers and sisters in palestine and in every part of the world where there is oppression you know because we're one ummah and on a humanitarian level take religion out of it for a second anything it's wrong it's wrong it has nothing to do with religion you know you need to hold yourself to that standard before you hold the other person to that stand so enough with the blended lies enough with the blindly you know following the mass media wake up see what's happening realize it come to the conclusions you know what's right is not always popular and what's popular is not always right but alhamdulillah and subhanallah the people begin to woke up you know and realize that like i said you had the civil rights movement in america you know just a little bit ago where it wasn't okay for a black person to drink out of the water fountain same water fountain as a white person and this was the norm and this is okay 
And if you argue against that, then you are wrong. And you got jailed for it if you uh, oppose it and you try to go against it. Have this mindset. Think think clearly for yourself. You know, be a free thinker. You know, it does not take a lot of effort. This is the largest, probably one of the largest things the Palestinians want, want is the world to know. Is the world to know what's actually going on. And to not be always painted and masqueraded around as the aggressor or the bad person in this they are people who have you know bare minimum bare minimum to defend themselves and under the international law they have every right to because they are an occupied people talk about it educate people let it be known spread the word make dua for them donate if you can donate you know help them out and uh, you know this is this is the best thing that we can do and hope for and hold people accountable hold hold sources accountable call uh, things out call things that are incorrect call it out you know we look in the past history and we say how did these things occur this is why it used to occur because people just blindly gonna follow and think that it's okay and accept it absolutely not you know speak out we're not asking for anything we're just asking for our basic human rights for our basic right to live to get education to have a proper life have water electricity all of that we're they're not asking for anything else Thank you guys for watching the video and educating yourselves on what's been going on in Palestine. The best thing we can do now is educate ourselves and make constant dua for the people of Palestine. Uh, another thing we can do is use our voices. The media sometimes uh, portrays things in the wrong light, so the best thing we can do is share videos that you see, share articles that uh, help speak out about what's going on in Palestine. Um, if you guys want me to make more videos uh, just like this about what's going on in Palestine and keep you guys updated with current events and news and things like that, please leave a comment down below and I'll continue to make more videos. It's been your boy Rio TV, aka Dream TV. Peace.